All right, thank you for coming. Um, on today's agenda, we start off uh, have first public uh, public uh, open forum, and then today we have the uh, school committee uh, to go over their budget and uh, little articles. Um, we also have a discussion from uh, uh, engineering facilities and their also. So I see there is nobody to. Is there anybody who wants to have, wants to discuss part of the open forum? Okay, on to the next agenda item. And as I just forgot, um, here, you know, those who don't know, those on the Appropriation Committee, uh, we have uh, Rebecca Roback, Shadul Manin, uh, Mike Manning, and uh, Pam Waxlax is, is dialed in remotely, so we have four people essentially attending. So first up is the, uh, going over the budget for the school committee, and uh, and Jean Birchman, I guess, uh, are you going to present, or what we have is we have a little handout. Yes. So that pretty much probably you presented it for your school committee in the town. So this is kind of good. a compilation um, of, of the various presentations that we've made since November. Um, so Dr. McLeod is on the phone or on the Google Hangout with us, and unfortunately, Susan. Um, had a last minute emergency and isn't available tonight. So I will do my best to walk us through this. And Tim is here, especially to answer capital questions. Um, but so we'll just, he might just walk right through this and then whatever questions you guys have, we can answer for you. Okay. So um, at the beginning, you'll see kind of where we started in January. Um, our original budget request for FY19 was 45. Point seven million dollars, which, as you all remember, represented a seven point three percent increase over FY eighteen. Um, as we went along through the process, we continued to refine that number. Um, some of the things included in that budget are an athletic fee increase from one hundred and ten dollars per season to two hundred dollars per season with twelve hundred dollar family cap. Um, there was a request to pay for school supplies rather than expect parents to bear that cost, we, um, we rejected that and parent, we're continuing the practice of parents buying their own school supplies. Um, we reduced staff at the high school, Hopkins and the Marathon School. Um, we increased professional development for a literacy program, eliminated the iPad refresh for Elmwood, and we um, were able to adjust, originally adjust our school bus bid um, contract by $183,000. That was initially an increase and then later on it was decreased. I that's know that right. slide's a bit confusing. Yeah, that's right. So at the time we voted our budget in January, we had just gotten the bid back and had not had time to go back and renegotiate it. So that's why um, it went down very quickly after that. Um, so this will sh the next slide just kind of shows you the difference. Um, you can see that payroll, actually the percentage of payroll has gone down even in our, even in our original budget went down from um, FY18 to FY19 and expenses went up in large part due to the drivers for that at the time were the bus contract and the increase in costs um, for operating the marathon school over the center school. Um, so you can see what the drivers, the major budget drivers were in the original budget. Special education, um, we have an increase this year of 800, over $800,000. So that's a 2% increase in our budget right there. Um, and then you can see the other budget drivers that were true. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the January budget unless you really want to, just because obviously it's changed a lot since then. But you can see um, what the budget drivers were in January, and there are some minor changes to them, which is how we got down to the 5.8 eventually. Um, but the sort of buckets are pretty much stayed, stayed the same throughout. Um, prior to our first vote in January. This next slide told, tells you the budget, excuse me, the personnel reductions that we went through prior to bringing the first budget forward. Um, so you can see the staff that we reduced from FY18 before starting on the FY19 budget. Um, and then the next slide just reviews what the budget drivers were for the personnel increases as of the January budget. 
And then there's kind of a summary slide that shows you how we got to the 7.3% increase originally, um, which includes the budget, the, the increase in personnel, the decrease in personnel, and then um, all of the major budget drivers. So following um, a series of joint meetings with the, the Board of Selectmen, ultimately the school committee was um, asked to reduce its budget by about $650,000 in order to help arrive at a net tax impact of 5% to the town. Um, so you can see here on this next slide the reductions that we did in order to get down there. So the $180,000 is the first renegotiation of our bus contract. <coughs> um, and that actually happened very quickly after we voted our budget in January. So the operating number that we were working with, or the, the number that we really were working with from that point forward was really a 6.9% increase. Um, we reduced additional um, technology staff. What slide are you on? I'm oh, sorry, I'm, I'm on additional reductions to FC voted budget. And the date is 111? It's, it's well, it's the reductions to the 111 okay, budget. It. It isn't, that, it's confusing, okay. the date isn't 111. Okay, um, we reduced additional elementary specialists and non-teaching support personnel. We had a request for an unpaid leave, long-term leave, um, so we will not be replacing that person for next year, although obviously they will come back at the end of next year, or you know, for the beginning of the following year. Um, and we had a decrease in central office support Potential additional bus contract savings of $50,000, that assumes the um, approval and completion of the campus, um, phase one of campus parking, excuse me, what are we calling it? Campus master plan? Campus master plan, yeah. yeah. So Susan was able to go back to the bus company and renegotiate an additional decrease of $50,000, assuming that we can park the buses at the high school. Um, so that's what you see reflected here. In addition, and not, not reflected here, there should be um, an increase to the excise tax for the town of $50,000. Um, we also basically eliminated our extraordinary maintenance um, account. And you'll see when we get to capital, we did increase one of our capital items to cover some of the projects that we absolutely couldn't defer. So that was, I think, a suggestion that Norman had made. So that was helpful. We were able to take the ones that we really couldn't defer out of our operating to put it into capital just for this year. But I know this is a practice that we all as a town have tried to get away from over time. Um, so Did that could transfer the page for capital then? The extraordinary maintenance costs, those projects? I didn't jump in the Okay, thank you. <laughs> and then an additional reduction of supplies. So that's how we got the additional reductions of $643,000, which you can see on the next slide, which is our voted budget from March 29th, um, brings us down to a $45,056,650 budget, which is a $2.465339 increase over FY18, which is a 5%, uh, 5.8% increase. Um, and so again, the budget drivers, you can see the updated budget drivers um, on the next page. Okay. Our salary increase, uh, our special education expense has not changed. That's not something that we have the ability to reduce. Um, we, have, we were able, by going back twice, to reduce the original bid for the buses by $265,000. The, and then made reductions in buildings and grounds and other programming um, to get down to the 5.8. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the increase. <laughs> I lied. That's not the reduction. That didn't add up in my head. This is what the budget drivers are. So that's the new total, which is reduced from what it was before. Oh, this is for the net increase. Right. Yes. Yeah, so before it was 490. So now it's 265. 
Okay. Uh, we're just trying to get Pam on the line, but uh, again, does anyone have any questions? Pam did send us questions this morning, so we've already sent her answers to those just in case you can't get her back on the phone. Um, I could probably get into them in my email if you want me to read them too. Most of them actually were for normal methods. Would be nice to hear that. Okay, well, let me pull those up while we're trying to get her back on the phone. Um, Why did central office increase by more than a million? Oh, I did get her question. I did you hear Mike's question? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to Kathy. Okay. Did you yes. hear Mike's question? No. Okay. Mike's question was in terms of the long term leave, the um, the leave of absence. Would, did we have adequate coverage to 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 cover that need? Is that, is that your question, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. I can speak to that. Um, so the reduction of the middle school involved a partial team with um, maintaining a couple of positions within that team to manage the, um, you know, whatever we might be getting that we're, we were not sure about. So we did not want to reduce, overly reduce. We wanted to have some um, wiggle room, shall we say. And so there were a couple of positions that were set to be a supportive positions to support students as we always get un with unknown needs as they come in um, and provide additional support given that class size was going to be larger. This position turns out that it is, be, is one of those positions. And so although we won't be able to provide the additional support um, and or potentially uh, enrichment opportunities that we would have been able to that team, we will be able to maintain the mathematics program um, without filling that position with a substitute. Okay. Thank you. Good answer. I did find Pam's questions, if you want to okay. them too. Do you want me to read you just the ones related to the schools, or there were, there were more from, from Norman? Do you want me to? Pretty much the school, just, just the, the school. 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 Okay. Yes. All right, so her first question for the schools was, um, why did the central office uh, budget increase by more than a million dollars? And Susan did respond this, this morning. Uh, that is our salary reserve. Uh, Usually in a negotiation year, we move the money in there, so that's what that was. Um, and then the rest of her questions are about capital articles. If you want me to wait till we get to that, yes. Okay. That was your only operating capital question. articles. We discussed it. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions on the, on the operational budget? Oh, just one clarification. I think you mentioned on the, the budget drivers page. Mm -hmm. The increase was 1.2, then reduction was 797, and new personnel is 1. The math, I'm sure there were other math behind. How does it, how does the math work? 1.2 minus 797, we still have new personnel of 1 million. Right, so that would be um, the contracted increases for our existing staff. So oh, okay. So basically, in our first budget, we reduced, and Kathy will correct me if I have this wrong, we reduced 15.4 FTEs and increased 15.9 FTEs, so it was about a wash, and then since then, in order to get down to the 5.8 additional staff was 
they do. So they were different. They're excuse me, they were just additional FTEs. But um, yeah, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Did I answer your question? Yeah, but then it has to increase because of the contract. Correct. Yes. Right. Exactly. Thank so we have steps and lanes plus the cola in the contract. Too. So I'm confused now. So. Where do you stand with difference in FGEs from last year? Where did you end up? I think now, are we, are we down about five or six FTEs, Kathy? Yeah, that would be right. Anything that was reduced after the original budget, so the January budget, any additional FTE showing on these slides um, would be, that would be, more reduction, more reductions and increases. In other words, so uh, where's that slide that says the additional FTE reductions? Um, I mean, right off the top of my head, I can think of three. Yeah. So and the answer would be like between three and five. Some pieces of art and music. And yeah. 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 And then the one full math. There, well, yeah. There. So there was the. Um, Technology okay. integration, the math, and the I, central office mm -hmm. is three right there. And then there were some also some adjustments, like in point whatever FTEs to art and music to to come up with, so we didn't have to eliminate fifth grade instrumental music. Correct. Yes. So when you do the. Uh, the presentation at town meeting, are you going to do it just with the number that ties into what's in the warrant, or are you going to do it like we're seeing it tonight, where we see what the school committee originally proposed, and then here's how we got down to the 5.8% increase? So, Jean, can, uh, that's a really great question, um, and Jean and I haven't discussed that yet. Um, I guess what I'd like to know is what what your thoughts are on that because I, I we haven't been in this place before um, it's during my time here anyway is this information that you think people should understand or would you prefer that we present a budget that speaks to the 5.8 percent so my experience having done this before when I was on the school period is I think you just go right to the 5.8 percent because I think it's just going to confuse people Too confusing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you can also have a slide that shows the original budget that you came to was at 7.8 percent or 9 percent, and then how we came that you had to come down to this, and then just discuss this is the 5.8 percent budget. Yeah, I mean, I think it might be because there has been a lot of attention paid, so and we haven't talked about it yet. But I think it might be good to focus on the 5.8, but have backup slides available and ready, and expect a question. You know, people want to know. This wasn't your first budget, or how did you get from that mm -hmm. one to this one, or whatever? So we could be prepared to do both, but not necessarily guide people through the presentation unless they're affirmatively interested in them. So, one more question. I know special education, this was kind of a. Um, I'm sorry? I said for, for special education, this this was kind of a big hit for next year. Are we anticipating it's going to improve? I know part of that was kind of unexpected yeah. lower reimbursement for circuit, circuit breaker, which you probably can't predict. But in general, are we at a special? Do you think it's going to keep on going? I think, and Kathy can correct me if I'm wrong, and we can we can resend that for those forecasts that we had sent to, for one of the joint meetings. But if I remember correctly, Kathy, from those slides, Susan was definitely um, – projecting that that was going to stabilize. We sort of had a perfect storm, as she described it this year, of um, a lot of actually move-ins of kids on IEPs, um, plus the- Out of district. Right. Um, so an increase in out of district costs combined with not only a decrease in the funding for Circuit Breaker, but an increase in our need to, to add staff post-budget over the last several years, which basically meant we were doing that out of the circuit breaker and spending down next year's money in this current year. Um, and so sort of all those things all came together this year. And so she has described it to us um, as a correction to the budget um, so that I think it should be more stable going forward. And she has it. Does that sound right, Kathy, to you? I don't That's think. That's perfect. That's exactly okay. right. Yeah. So she's expecting it to stabilize. 
I, I believe in the meetings before, as far as what percentage of circuit breaker she was anticipating was going to be reimbursed next year. I think she was assuming this year, which would have already been lower than what you had kind of projected. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. She is still projecting 65%, although we got an email today that I think they're actually going to um, increase the FY18 allocation. So that will help because we're currently in a budget deficit. But um, And I think they're moving towards... There's been a lot of conversation at the State House about increasing the circuit breaker in the FY19 budget as well. Um, we actually are going tomorrow morning to a meeting with Alex Paisian, uh, Carolyn Dyke, another meeting with Gary, school committee members. Let's go back to our group. It was $12 million for the education today for the uh, students from Puerto Rico who are moving to the state. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. But this is something we still have. I'm sure that. And I think you asked me that question before. I don't think we got a lot of students from Puerto Rico, did we, Carol? I don't mm -hmm. think we got any, which is kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess we're not getting the guests. All right, never mind. <laughs> we don't really have room for anyone. Question. Yeah. Uh, you referenced a deficit in FY18. Yes. Yeah. Is that a real deficit or a mathematical deficit? The reason I'm asking is we're finalizing the warrant for town meeting. Right. And if there are any supplemental appropriations in 18, we need to know. Yeah. Um, I would expect that Susan would have had that conversation with you. What she has described to us is, I know we've had a budget freeze for uh, several months. Several months. And um, so what was our last projection, $86,000, something like that? Uh, I don't know the answer well enough to that question to commit to, to giving you a, a factual answer. So I mean, that's something we can send an email to Susan and ask. Yeah, I'll put up with that. Susan, Carol, and Kathy. All right, thanks. That's good for the operational budget. Okay. Uh, you want to start going over the capital? Yeah, and why not? I know, um, I think you asked Dan to every time about turf. Do you want to save that for the last? In case he makes it? In case he makes it. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'll save that for the last, even though it's on the top of your page. Um, so this does, does reflect our vote on March 29th. So again, in, um, as part of our ongoing efforts to work together to get the net tax impact, excuse me, down to 5% five, five um, we did postpone a lot of our um, capital. So this reflects this, you can see the changes uh, that we've made from our original request, which is that middle column, to our amended request. So I'll leave the turf field to the last, but um, the campus plan, the campus master plan study, stage one, which Tim can definitely fill us in better about than I can, but involves um, the parking lot, paving field, what's currently field nine, which is right behind the high school. So that is large enough to house all of our buses plus the cars for the bus drivers. Um, and this includes security, fencing, light, yep. all of that. Um, we did, I believe after discussions with Norman, we did increase that from 320000 to $400,000 just in case there are any wetlands issues. But that, there really aren't wetlands there, but just to be cautious in case there were any conflicts. We want to make sure our runoff from the parking lot because it changes from going from grass to pavement. The runoff could change and we have a retention pond or detention pond that's that field now we just have to make sure that this parking lot that will encompass this so there may be some kind of infrastructure work that we have to do to make sure that the parking lot works there as yeah. far as drainage and poles too, right? poles yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so as far as you know you think 320,000 will work it's really just a contingency for this weather uh, yes um then technology upgrades. So this is, we have, the original request actually was $200,000, I think. That we've sort of had a standing article for $200,000 for technology as well as for safety uh, and security. But we brought that down. This is the technology that Ashok said that we cannot do without. Um, it covers, the one word that I know is switches, and any other questions, we'll so, refer to 
So it covers uh, uh, upgrades to all the core switches in all of the schools, um, uh, to the district data center servers, plus the main switch in the high school that interconnects all the buildings with the town fiber. Um, so he broke that down a little further. The breakdown for that is 147K for the core switches and 18K for the software and support for the HP servers and data recovery and the high school and the uh, so that's the hopefully <laughs> <laughs> that's a sufficient answer <laughs> 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 so, um, so the next one capital replacements district wide this is the one that we did increase to cover those capital um, those maintenance mm -hmm. uh, so I think in the original 108 was a lot of the HVAC work that we had talked about, exhaust fans, um, stuff that's currently broken in the buildings that's been broken for a number of years that we're trying to get back up to the functional. Um, and then I believe the additional 40,000 was to encompass some of the other capital that we that we took out. It's a bad um, extraordinary yeah. yeah. Um, and so that that actually was a bond you asked before, and Rogan said if that was a page you go. Um, the AEDs, so this is something that our athletic director brought forward to us, but we have, I think, two, um, which is really not sufficient for the acreage that we cover, particularly because we have to, we keep having to go off-site so frequently to Fruit Street, um, and we don't have enough AEDs for coaches to travel with them, although all the coaches are trained to use them, right? Oh, that's true. Yes. Um, so this would be, it, this would allow us to purchase um, enough AED so that every team has uh, an AED that they can have, they, that they can travel with. We did look into grant funding um, several different times and did not find any that were available um, that would apply to Hawkington anyway. Um, the walk-in refrigerators and freezers, I believe this has already failed, correct, or is failing? Yes, so yeah, this is, this is kind of. A must, I, well, and this I is at the middle school? Um, we have issues at pretty much all the schools. Okay. So um, Hawkins is going through an issue now where their uh, walk-in refrigerator is not functioning. So we're just kind of stuffing things where we can and you know, utilizing the other schools, making sure we're keeping that inventory low. But um, it's kind of the main component for the cafeterias, obviously. So I would say across the district, we've had um, little issues. That's probably the biggest one, and then you know, just kind of again core function issues with the others. So um, only twenty thousand dollars, though. Is that to fix them or to replace? Some them? is, you know. So some is like I would say Hopkins, you know, off the top of my head, is probably like a seven thousand dollar fix uh, to get that one going. The others probably, uh, not probably, are the smaller fixes to get them uh, okay. seals. Doors, hinges, you know, that kind of. Okay. So it's not replacing them, it's more just. Yeah. Right. Fixes. Yeah. Yeah. Fixes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, AEDs, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You mentioned we have two now, and this is going to accommodate how many more? Oh, gosh. What is the total number of teams that we have? We have 60 teams. Yeah, but in the, so we're just doing it. We're not getting 60. We're getting enough. Yeah. The fall season, we have the most. Yeah. So we're getting enough to cover all of the teams that we have in the fall season. and I. Maybe that's 19, that number is popping in my head. I'm not confident, but I can find that out for you if you want to know. And they get passed to the winter coaches yeah. and the spring. Yeah. So enough to cover it at the same time, covering all the teams. Yes, yeah. Uh, we, we do also, I was going to say, have off-site teams that are not on the high school property in addition to the Fruit Street fields. We also have the swim team. We have alpine skiing and uh -huh. hockey. They're not able to access anything else. Uh, so the next one are security upgrades. So this is primarily for cameras on the loop road. Um, so we did reduce this by half, and the show thinks that combination of improving technology and clever positioning, we can yeah. we can cover the areas that we need to. So he did, yeah. He did say exterior cameras. You would probably do at the doghouse and around near the track, and then. Uh, remaining perimeter of the buildings, you know, so we have some on the doors, he wants to kind of finish those, so each, each of the entryways, entry slash exits will have a camera. Um, so near all the new buses that are parking there? Well, that would be part of the, <laughs> that would be part of the, those are additional as part of the, um, 
as, oh, as part of the phase one. one there, yeah. Okay. Those are going with those, I'm, you know, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. um, he did say, um, well, I'll leave it there. Okay, well, yeah, so the additional cameras would be added in future years. Yeah. But this is, yeah, to phase it in, but this was where he felt like he could start for this year. Um, so are there any other questions about cameras? Uh, just quickly. Yeah. When we're doing the cameras, I assume the master plan, are you going to cover the period of the overall? And the reduction is uh, based on what's the minimal we're doing now. Then it can really reach to the overall coverage. Is that kind of, and I just want to yeah. make sure that. It so I think he, yeah, I think I think the original request was for two hundred thousand. We pulled a hundred thousand out of that, so we just essentially took the scope of what he wanted to do this year and cut it half. Oh. So in the future years, he will probably ask for another an additional hundred thousand to continue on if that continues to be our, our path. Yeah, I think in the past we've had, we've had sort of a standing article for two hundred thousand dollars, and we've done it some some of those years that's been joint safety and security with the town. Um, other years, I think it's mostly just related to the school. So my expectation would be that we would go back to that next year. I mean, I think that's what. Obviously, I haven't talked about next year yet, but that's what I would expect to see, um, and that would include. It sounds like the next um, steps then what he would be continuing with is in, in terms of safety and security would be continuing with the cameras. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to check that uh, we do feel that this is sufficient for what we want to achieve in terms of coverage for the security. I think he, he felt like this was a, a good way to start um, and also I think a way to test out the technology as well. <clears throat> the wetlands order of conditions. So we, in the process of doing the permitting for the turf field project, we're told about an outstanding order of conditions that at least I was not aware of that even predates me, even Rebecca, <laughs> um, <laughs> on the school committee, which is uh, related to actually the building of the, the original fields that are down on the complex there at the high school. Um, so when those fields originally were built, there was a, uh, wetlands were disturbed and the agreement was that there had to be a replication, which under the original uh, order of condition had to be replicated at a ratio of two to one, so basically make it twice the size. Somehow that got dropped along the way. No one ever did it. It wasn't on our radar screen, it wasn't on when, when you were on the school committee with me, there were two other order of conditions that we were aware of that we did um, resolve mm -hmm. that Ralph, like literally on his last day, was able to finally resolve the last one. Um, so anyway, so this one came to our attention as part of the permitting process for the turf fields. It isn't related to the turf field, so it, it isn't being funded within the scope of that project. This is a pre-existing requirement and had it been completed there wouldn't be any wetlands implication for the turf field project so we've kept it separate for that reason um, we worked extensively with concom on that and had a lot of conversation with them and all kind of agreed that given the more controversial name, uh, nature of the turf field project they would be safer if it was not tied to the turf field project because then if that didn't pass then that replication wouldn't happen and wasn't really related to that project anyway. So originally, their request was that we have a capital article this year for $100,000 to complete the replication. Um, but again, as we were all working toward, towards reducing the budget, um, what I suggested to them is that if we were to reduce that to $10,000 and just do the engineering and design for the replication with the intention that the funding for the actual work would be put into the FY20 capital requests, um, would they be comfortable with that? So that we weren't dropping the ball again, but we were um, being mindful of the unusual impact of the FY19 year. So um, I had a lot of conversation with Jeff Barnes. He was 
comfortable with that. So that's why you see the reduction there from $100,000 to $10,000, and that's what that represents. Um, the middle school auditorium is like always a bridesmaid. <laughs> I don't know how many that on there when you were on the school committee. Yeah, maybe so. We're happy to postpone that for one more year. And we're all going to sweat at yeah. town meeting again. Um, and then uh, we had, Susan had brought forward a suggestion to put a dishwasher back into the middle school. There used to be one there. It hasn't been one there for many years. Um, but, you know, to be more environmentally conscious. Um, that was a recommendation that she brought forward, but obviously this was not the right year to do that. So we took that one off as well. Um, so with the exception of the turf fields, those are our capital I articles. If, if you want, I could read through Pam's questions. One question? Yes. Um, as related to the campus master plan study, I know that the, the loop road and the road leading to the loop road have been in segments reconstructed because the base wasn't adequate. Is part of the study going to take a look at that given there might be increased bus traffic now? Um, on those roads? No, we think the bus traffic will be the same as it okay. is today. Um, so we haven't taken that into account. That may have to come up um, in a phase two. Mm -hmm. If we move forward, um, we would probably take a better look at the loop road itself yeah. and how that better functions for us. Can you describe to them what the traffic will be the bus path, traffic the bus? Sure. <laughs> so the buses will go down uh, Hopkins Road um, and they'll take a, you know, a right, essentially right behind the high school, and they'll go up that. Like it's a, a little wider than a fire looking now. And then they'll loop into, they'll drop the students off at the door behind the high school. Um, the children going to the middle school will just take that little walk up the road, mm -hmm. that service road, and the high school kids will obviously go to the high school. And then they'll back down into the parking lot, park or if they're going on another run, come back out a second exit or the exit, back onto that loop road and, and back down out of the Hawkins Road, you can envision what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So um, so they won't be on the loop road, they'll be They won't be, you know, yeah, no further traffic, uh, uh, buses except for, you know, Hawkins, uh, uh, when they're doing their So the buses won't loop down between the middle school and the high school? No. no. They all stay in the back of the high school? Yes. Okay. And actually, if you if you um, if you didn't watch our March 29th school committee meeting, but <laughs> you want to, um, actually, Susan walked us through okay. all of the options um, for the next several phases. So it was actually fascinating. Um, so I, I really do. It's good viewing if you have a chance to. And you don't have to watch the whole meeting to do that. Um, but she, but so it was really interesting to see what the different phases were, including improvements to the traffic at Hopkins, to yep. drop off and pick up at Hopkins, um, some other potential ways to increase availability of parking up towards um, 85. And so anyway, there were a lot of options on there. And to get more traffic off of Hayden Row. Right. Uh, and significantly more. So. And that's, and that, you know, that's the, oops, that's <coughs> mainly why we undertook this um, because with the traffic calming measures, we have to get the parent tra traffic off of Hayden Row. They can't queue on Hayden Row. So in order to do that, we had to create more space on the campus itself. And so um, this is just a much safer, as Susan describes it too, it's, just a, it's much safer to separate the bus tra traffic from the car and pedestrian traffic anyway. So um, I think this is a much safer approach and certainly um, brings the cars off the road and onto the campus, so now the bus loop can be and pick up, or however you guys are gonna do that, but yeah, it just gives you more options. I think in our, in our first year, if the if field nine you know, turns into a parking lot, bus parking lot, yeah, our first year we're gonna, can, we won't use the, we won't use the bus parking as primary parking, we'll probably use it as we do now for um, visitor parking, and then we'll still use the loop as part of the parent pickup to begin to begin this first year. And then there's you know plans out that I probably couldn't describe or lose you right along the way. Um, but I think that's our first year to help get get us off Aiden Road because I believe Nova was citing the traffic calming this spring or this summer. This spring. Yeah. Can we read Pam's question? Yeah. 
questions? Sure. Yeah, questions. Um, these are her capital article questions, although I don't think they're all necessarily for us. There's a question, are the borrowings for municipal and schools within the levy limit, which I assume is... I can't hear. I'm just question. reading your question. Oh, <laughs> so I should know it. <laughs> well, well, I think that quite, actually that question is probably is, more towards the turf field. Right, but we don't decide. Okay. Um, what is the impact for FY19 and FY20? You know what, let's stick with just the capital articles because that's more of a question I think for Norman as these, a finance team. Yeah, these are your first two capital article questions. That's why I was reading them. To the school capital articles? It's just as capital articles and these are the first two. Yeah, no, yeah. those are, those are, are um, For Norman? Yeah. Okay. I'm happy to not answer those. They're too hard for me. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the next one. Let's start with the campus road master plan one. Okay. What are the cost savings associated with the bus parking lot, both in terms of cost savings on the new contract and excise tax paid to Hopkinton instead of Ashland? So that I did answer in the operating piece, but so $50,000 for each of those pieces, totaling $100,000. Um, is, is that a conservative number? Because a couple of years ago we were getting like $100,000. So, so that's the same number, right? So the $100,000 is the $50,000 increase to excise taxes and the $50,000 reduction to the bus contract. So that's the same um, numbers that Ralph has been carrying for the years, yeah. Um, uh, will the buses stay parked in a lot during the school day between pickup and drop off and overnight? Yes. What additional security measures need to be taken if the buses are on school property during non-school hours? So the lighting and cameras and fencing is all part of that. Um, article. Will the buses be able to take advantage of the gas tanks at the DPW and if so are those cost savings built into the new contract? And Susan did answer that question and I can't pull up her question, her answers at the same time as these questions but do you have those? Uh, I, I, think I, think I, did, those. I know yeah. the answer. She said that they would use the town fuel depot as, oh. fuel, as it's already built in the contract price. There you go. Thank you. Um, Facilities improvements district wide. Wasn't Hopkins HVAC just replaced this past year? Hopkins HVAC. Um, so we had a green communities grant to upgrade controls, but not necessarily equipment. Pam said we had an article in May of 2017 for 125,000 for Hopkins HVAC. I, be I believe that, that was a little before me, but I believe that was for the uh, potential of engineering for that, so we hadn't spent that money. Okay. Um, is the additional 40 related to specific maintenance at the schools? And let's see. You might want to take them one at a time if anything else has questions about. So she has a list of things here, G. Yeah. Facility improvements include exa exhaust fans in many buildings, a large unit in Elwood. Currently, the gym is operating from one unit for the whole space um, since the other one has been down for years. It also includes repairs at the high school. Period. Sorry. Period. <laughs> so, do they answer that question? Are we talking about the facilities improvements one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, HPS safety and security. This is the other half of the. Oh, is the other half of the original request going to be rolled into next year's request? So yeah, I think the the next several phases will also include cameras and adding cameras. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's end. Yeah. And then the wetlands order of conditions. Um, she asked. You know, why did this take five years to be brought forward as a capital article? Um, <laughs> there, Don McAdam found an email or, email or a letter that he sent to our interim superintendent in 2012. So apparently he was aware of this. I was not aware of this. So all I can say is that as soon as it was brought to our attention, you were on school committee too, as soon as it was brought to our attention, we, we worked to, uh, to address it. But it's something that predated all of us and just the ball got dropped somewhere along the way. So however we got here, I think it's important that we not drop it again. So this was the best way that we could think of to move it forward. Do you know if that order condition was made on the same time as the other two? 
I think it even predates that because the as built ones that that was well. So there was one because the Terry property had um, land in the APR program, and so we had the pile of dirt mm -hmm. for many years. And I think that Norman found space through Legacy where we got that resolved, right? And then um, the other one was the as built plans and. The as -built plans were never <coughs> filed with the signed as -built plans, I guess, were never filed yeah. with the town, and um, no one could find them. And so Ralph somehow tracked down the original architect because we were going to have to pay to have them recreated and certified, which was going to be really expensive. So Ralph was somehow able to track down the architect who wrote a letter that was sufficient for Concom and they, um, so they resolved that one. So those were the two that that I had always been aware of that we were working on. I didn't know about this one until. Uh, yeah, because there was a lot of, and I don't know if you were in town at the time, the loop was built, there was a lot of controversy about that road on um, a lot of back and forth with the conservation commission. So I just want to make sure that was actually, in the end, one of the things that was agreed to, and it wasn't something that was initially put forward and then got negotiated. Uh, well, this is not for the loop road, it's for the athletic fields. Okay. Well, yeah. But it was related to. Part of it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess I don't know. I'm just surprised that it was never brought forward by Me those too. people who were on the school committee when I was on um, soon after the high school was open. Yeah. The yeah. Road might have just gotten more publicity over yeah. the issues. Yeah. 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 Yes. Rebecca's been out counting salamanders for many years. Big night was a couple of things. <laughs> 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 <Another one was. laughs> if, if, I, if I may, yeah. I think one of the possible reasons is that in the past, the town relied on temporary school building committees mm -hmm. and most of these issues come up after those mm -hmm. committees have been dissolved okay. and so follow-up is very is not as strong as we would like, would like it to be. Yeah, so I mean, I, who knows how we exactly arrived here, but I yeah. think uh, I, I, I would really advocate that we should, that nobody should be having this campaign this conversation 20 more years down the road from now, so it would be good to take care of it. Um, so that is all of our capital requests except for the turf field, and maybe Dan is not coming, so why don't we just talk about the turf field? Um, so I know, um, well, Pam has been our liaison for the turf field subcommittee. Um, I don't know if you, uh, you know, I'm gonna apologize, I can't remember if you guys have come to some of the public forums or not, or our presentation to the school committee or to the board of selectmen. So um, I should have brought in some big poster board in the car. But basically, what we're doing is bringing forward a, turf, a project to put artificial turf on fields four and five, which are directly behind and below the football field. So the, the sports that would be accommodated on those fields include soccer, field hockey lacrosse, football, baseball, and softball. Um, so we have, and, and you probably will remember, we brought this article forward last year, um, but we pulled it at town meeting because we were not far enough along in the process. We had missed the window to go to CPC for grant funding. We didn't have firm bids to give um, precise funding requests, and we hadn't worked out with Parks and Rec how to manage the fields um, so that they are a community asset, not just a school asset, and just hadn't really had time to work collaboratively with other boards and committees in town as well as you know enough time to inform the public. So we have spent the last year doing that. I already described a little bit about the work that we did with CONCOM um, around with them, with all of the permitting is approved for this through CONCOM. We did apply to CPC for grant funding. They've given us two grants, one for $1 million um, and one for $720,000. That's a 10-year borrowing to pay for the lights. Um, they did a similar structure for the, you'll, you'll see when Parks and Rec comes for the light project that Parks and Rec um, has this year. Um, we also spent a lot of time working with Parks and Rec and we have worked out a memorandum of understanding between the schools and Parks and Rec. So as 
essentially the structure is that during school hours and up until about six o'clock, the schools will have use of the fields and all of the scheduling for that will be done by the schools. After that, there will be um, a period of time where the fields will be available for all of the youth sports groups in town. Parks and Rec will manage the scheduling and um, fees for that. Then after that, um, and on you know weekends and you know for tournaments and that kind of thing, um, they they will be available for rental for outside groups. So like club soccer, club baseball, um, other groups like that. And Parks and Rec will also manage that. So also on the warrant is an article to set up a revolving fund where all of the money will be all of the revenue will be deposited, all of the maintenance will be paid from the revolving fund. Um, the intention is that the revolving fund will accumulate money so that that will offset the replacement of the um, carpet and the fill when the time comes for that to happen. Um, the way that we've structured it, we've created an oversight committee that has representation from Parks and Rec as well as the schools and they will meet they're charged with meeting at the beginning of every season to set up schedules, um, to solidify the maintenance plan, to make decisions about are we going to plow this winter, are we not going to plow this winter, um, and the expectation is that there's cost sharing between what they do at Fruit Street and what we will do, what they'll do on the school property, so that you know we're using the same services and sharing some costs there. Um, the fill that we have selected, we went through a, a long process of evaluating that. It's an organic infill. Um, and actually, the manufacturer <coughs> will be at our forum, our public forum on Wednesday, which unfortunately you have a meeting um, that night, but it will be it will be taped by each cam if you want to watch it. Um, so, and also that fill, um, Tim, you have to help me with this. They can sweep it all up and replace the carpet and put it back down yeah. with very little loss, just yeah. fill in a little bit. So we thought that that was an interesting cost savings as well. Yeah. Um, so we did get, we did go out to bid. We do have, we have awarded a bid which is contingent on funding of being approved at town meeting. Um, the final bid amount, and Susan actually went back and renegotiated. We did two bids. One was through the, um, the municipal bid, that's separate. It's part of a collaborative movie for the tech bid. The tech tech bid. bid. Um, we did that <coughs> for the carpet and the infill, and she was able to renegotiate a lower cost to that bid ultimately, and then the, up the rest of it, we went um, through the general bid process. And so the combined total is $3.5 million, um, as I said, CPC will be um, paying $1.7 million of that. The um, schools have committed to raising $500,000 to corporate sponsorship and community funding. So the cost um, to the town is estimated to be $1.3 million. And we did have, I didn't print it out, but um, Norman did get us the numbers for that. And it ends up to be about $23 per year for the average family home value, um, and that's for a 10-year period of borrowing. How are you doing with the uh, potential donations? We raised $2,000 this weekend in on the nice. funding page alone. Um, we have people who are working on, uh, who have reached out to um, businesses in the community and so that's in process. There are some opportunities for sponsorship specifically related to scoreboards or windscreens that can go on fencing. Um, we can, we'll put up a, a sign somewhere near the entrance that, you know, acknowledges all of the major donors. Is this gonna, would this be part of the athletes? Village for the marathon, or is that no, separate? it's below that because I believe the athletes' village is just on the football field and field field nine, field one, and field two. Okay. The athletes' village. 
So, but, so there's not a potential that you can get Boston reference funding to cover because they're not going to necessarily have this field because they're not on the field, so it sounds like. Uh, that's a really good question. You know, I don't know that we would we would have to look into it. We'd work with obviously Parks and Rec to make sure. You know, um, yeah. I don't know that we'd be opposed necessarily to turn that into part of the Runners Village, mm -hmm. only because the turf can withstand a lot more punishment than grass fields can. You it's know, a great you, can, you can drive trucks on them, so yeah. I imagine you can put people on them. You yeah. Know. yeah, that's a very good suggestion. The BAA still does give. Um, in fact, I believe we just got the check from the town this week. Uh, still does give the twenty-five thousand dollars a year to use the schools. What we've been using that for over the last several years is the cross-country course. Um, so, but that is a very good suggestion. Yeah. But unless they give more, right. it's already counted for. Right, but I mean, yeah. they might prefer, yeah. yeah. It's certainly worth a question. Though. So how will the maintenance cost, if you've got the Parks and Rec revolving fund, you know, having some of the money. Are you expecting the schools will also be contributing to the maintenance as well, and you know, using town kind of money? I know that. Well, so I think I think um, we're setting up a revolving count for our fields. So any money that um, even Parks and Recs generates through tournaments will go into that revolving account. And that's the suggested way we're going to pay for the maintenance. On. So purely through the revolving fund, and not necessarily through any money that would be raised through taxes that would be. Put into the well, except that, like, for example, lining the fields, you guys line the field now, yeah, it's like school staff would be lining the fields for school events. No, it doesn't happen as often, you do it like once a season, but um, so I think there's some shared costs like that. But that's again what the oversight committee is charged with reviewing and setting up before every season um, and every year. So, because I think what we at least what we know is there's a lot we don't know yet, and so we wanted to make sure that there was frequent communication by an oversight committee um, to resolve those issues as they came up. Yeah, follow up question, and in fact this came up late this afternoon. We're beginning to work on the motions, and the question is, this revolving fund would be under the school committee or under park and rec? The reason being, there are different, different Law requirements or legal requirements. Right. Uh, based on whether it's a school committee or park and rec. Um, we have that conversation, and I know. I thought we were setting it up under the school. I think we were. Yep. I would feel more confident if Susan validated mm -hmm. my memory, but I believe that that's what we did. What okay. we agreed to. I would, I would put an email into Susan and just follow yeah, up. Yeah, I think that's what we have to send you the MLU that we have as well. Okay, that would be helpful. Did you mention uh, we are expecting it to be a wash, is that right? That um, the money that the revolving fund gets would be enough to do the maintenance going forward. Is that the assumption? It, it's certainly, yes. It's certainly, I mean, maybe in the first fall when we have zero revenue and only um, costs, no, but it, it certainly will cover the maintenance. What we have tried, so we, we met with several other towns that do this, and Medway was a good example. The, the preferred rate negotiated by town teams in Medway is so low that uh, people will often reserve it and then not use it so that they're not, which means that they've lost revenue because they've had, they would have had an opportunity to run uh, to a club for those whatever hours. Um, and what they cautioned us is that if you, you know, depending on how you structure your rental pricing for in-town groups particularly, um, you know, you may not raise as much money as you want to replace the entire project when that day comes. But the advantage that we have over Medway is that Parks and Rec already is running Fruit Street and already has set rates that people are used to paying, which are much higher than Medway. Sorry for anybody that's listening. Um, so we don't anticipate that that's going to be a problem. So the simple answer is that, barring, you know, with the exception of the first fall season, it absolutely should pay for the maintenance. Um, and what we've said is that the goal is that it will offset the costs of the eventual replacement, and it's our hope that it will pay for it in full, but we're just a little cautious to make that, that solid promise. 
But, and the theory is the maintenance costs are much lower yeah. than what we're paying currently to maintain grass. So in, in our first year, I would say our maintenance costs are probably very little because it's brand new. So we're not worried about bringing in new fill because you know a bunch went home and kid shoes, you know. So um, our first year maintenance costs we think will be essentially covered by the project because there shouldn't really be much maintenance other than lining the fields for the first time and stuff like that. And I do want to say, um, you know, we, we really are very committed to this being a community project, but we're not just doing this out of the goodness of our hearts. We have a tremendous challenge, um, particularly in the spring. Right now, our student athletes have, their, their season is delayed by a month, right? Yep. They're not even starting games until May. This is what happened last year, and they bump up on the required deadline for completing all the games in order for tournament play to start and end up playing five games in seven days because they've had so many postponed and cancellations right now. Um, they're playing, they're practicing baseball in the gym, um, which is not really where baseball is played, and so it's not really preparing them for the season. So the constraints that we have, because not only do we have a lot more student athletes um, than we have in the past, but also, you know, just the vagaries of New England weather, um, which we all cannot control. So this is, this is a really valuable improvement to the schools for the athletic program. But in addition, we're really committed to this being a valuable improvement for the entire community um, to you. So I just, I, I wanted to make sure you understood that this is a need that we have, but we also want to make sure that it's an opportunity that's available for everybody else. And the opportunity goes, you know, we're putting lights on the field, so the opportunity goes from not just to when it gets dark, it goes till I believe our town is 10 o'clock right now. So we have opportunity to use those fields from, you know, essentially 6 o'clock. The community work from 6 o'clock on till 10. And, and the electric bill for the after our uh, electricity or the lights, is that covered in the operational budget? It's a good question. Um, Susan probably be better to answer yeah, that I as well. Yeah, I think that that's just getting, I think that's reflected in the revolving fund. Mm -hmm. And the rates that we're going to check. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I have a couple of questions. Um, so do you have a written projection for the revolving fund, how the incoming revenue is going to meet, that just shows the maintenance and the eventual replacement costs? That, that we would have to ask. I think that they have a, a model that they have you know, and more experience with the street. So, do I have that? I, I would like to. Like see, I would like to see it. If it's yeah, I, I we can ask you about that. And two, the five hundred thousand that you plan to raise, how is that applied? You know, be, is it going to be there by the time we borrow? Like, is there going to be a, a check presented to the town for five hundred thousand to offset the cost of the? Three point, I'll say three point five million dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, um, well, so you take one point seven off, right? So we're really talking about the difference between one point. Yes, sorry, you take the one point. I mean, assuming that the CPC article passes at town meeting, you would take the one point seven off. And so we're talking about the difference between one point eight and one point three. Um, and so we don't have a plan currently for, you know, writing, making a big check or. Um, so that's not the plan, or. We don't have a plan. It isn't not the plan. So we may have to borrow the 1.8 because right. we're going to have the 500 and available. I, and this is where I, I get out of my element in terms of my knowledge of municipal finance, but I, I'm not sure exactly how the borrowing is structured and the timing works, per se. So if you're telling me that the deadline for raising this money is May 7th, Well, I'm asking this question now because yeah. we went through this with the library. Yeah, right. Raising a million dollars, and I'm saying, okay, they raised a million dollars. Where's the check to the town to offset right. the borrowing? And I thought so. I didn't ask that beforehand the last time, so I'm asking that now. Is so you're plan? So you're asking is let me make sure. How I does the it? town get the five hundred thousand that you plan to raise? So that's really part of financial plan for. Right, right, right. So you don't have to answer it now. But right. 
know, before we vote, I'd like to know right. if there's something, so, there's a definitive plan. Yeah, so I can say this. So the boosters have set up a fund, and they are collecting the fund. Um, so they have a GoFundMe, they kickstarted it, they had a fundraiser, whatever. Um, so that is where the money is living um, until the point at which we would, I, I mean, I don't know how you transfer that money over. I guess they would write you a check, write a check to the town. I would like somehow to know there's a guarantee that whatever is raised does go to offset the cost yeah, yeah. of yeah. Yeah. the borrower. In fact, if I may, um, we are again in the process of drafting the motions. I just want to be clear that the private fundraising has been stated previously as part of the financing plan. Is yes. it or is it? Yes. It is. So it will be reflected in the motion, similar to <coughs> what happened with the library and similar to what happened with the MSBA grant right. and, 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 and other projects that the town has funded in a similar manner. Right. So okay. we vote the bigger number, but in the motion it says maybe covered by money's raised or yes. borrowing. Right. Yeah, yeah. And we specify the amount. Yeah. Right. And the amount would be the 1.8, not the 1.3, even though we're expecting the actual amount. We need to go off borrow is 1.3. I think the town will be borrowing more than 1.3. Part of the CPC request is going to be borrowed. Correct. The, the 500,000 will be borrowed. And the remaining 1.3 1. 1. 3 will be borrowed. Yeah. So I think, I don't know, Mike, if this is what you're asking specifically, but for example, when we did the football stadium, um, how many years ago? The town borrowed that money, but the combination of the, uh, well, at the time, HAA, now 26.2, and BAA money, I think, paid the interest on the borrowing. So there wasn't, so in the operating, or the, there wasn't debt service for the town. Um, but that was how that got managed. Um, I don't know that the $500,000 would cover that, per se, but so it's that kind of way. I kind of look to see how you, you know, because you're, you're not the only one to say, oh, we're going to raise five hundred thousand put towards the, the use of the field. But yeah. I'd like to know you exactly to when that time comes, what how to expect it. So it's okay. there's people with different opinions of what, what the expectation was. So I don't well, know if that's written it can't be written into the warrant or or just expectation. Is there, is there a difference, or would you have a preference of, you know, the boosters writing a check? At the time of the when borrow, it, when it's we a need to borrow, point, or probably. waiting until the whole amount, or we make time at the time of borrowing is what you're thinking. That's so obviously the optimal yeah. time, but I know that's difficult. But there's some you're setting you're setting yourself. The bar that you're for the level, the expectation. I think I'm, I, I, I'm shooting from the hip here, but here's what I've had. Um, subject to town meeting approvals, this project will commence immediately. The goal is to have the fields ready by four. That's that's still being today working with Mike, and I'm not so I'm not I'm not familiar with the fundraising. Plans and schedules. We're not quite at five hundred thousand dollars yet. <laughs> I, 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 I get that, but yeah. you know, it, it, we're, it's part of the proposal for this. Yeah. And like, so we need to go out and borrow some money. Is it July first, or is it like in May? We need to borrow the money for July first. We have the fiscal year to start. It, it depends on how this is structured. Again, I I'm not familiar with the construction mm -hmm. schedule. I'm assuming for the town meeting. You will go through the appropriate permitting process. The permitting is all done. The permitting is all done. Yeah. The, the bid process. The bid process is all, all done. done. It's just contingent on town meeting. So Great. we obviously have to wait for the spring sports season to conclude. Yeah. But our understanding um, from our, our from Gale Associates is that the work can begin in 
to as long as the bills do not come until July. 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 That's correct, Pam. I, I was not suggesting that the motion would be for different amounts. I was okay. simply listing what would be in the motion. Yeah, okay. And I want to clarify. So we need to borrow 3.5 now, and then as we get from CPC and as we get donations, we pay back to the debt. Correct. Well, so the CPC will be voted on the same night. So assuming that passes, would you still, would you just borrow the 1.8? And it, it all depends on the, the the funding needs for the project. Okay. Um, the bills have to be paid. Exactly. Right. 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 So right. CCC <laughs> needs to vote on town meeting before that can be applied to the. Yes. And so that I don't know when the meeting with the moderator is, but I wanted to ask his. I mean, on the on the warrant, the turf field project comes or at least on the draft warrant, the turf field project is before the CDC vote, right? In, in fact, um, we were discussing this issue this afternoon. The goal now is to combine the different, the two, the current two articles pertaining to the fields will be combined into one. So that's good. So that oh, so that would be the, exactly, the so CDC one and the... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, yeah, so, because um, I think that will be very important to yeah. people who are at town meeting that, you know, they want to know that that's going to pass before they move mm -hmm. yeah. Good question. You might have mentioned it earlier. What is the um, life of the turf that we're going to put in? And I think there was 12, 12, years. 12 years. 12 12 years is the kind of manufacturer statement. It depends on how it's cared for throughout that time. So it could go right at 12 years, it could go 15 years. Uh, we anticipate probably, if we have the use that we're talking about, we're, we're, I would go into the impression that we would look at 12 years to replace the carpet. But it would just be a carpet replacement, so the shock pad is good. I think that was 25 years. 25 years. And again, this this infill you can yeah, you vacuum would, up. You would vacuum up and then you would only have to supplement yeah. to get it to whatever the, the level standard is to have. For the fire fill, I think it's yeah. So, with other turf fields, you have to replace both. So, is the plan that the revolving fund will keep some money aside? So, after 12 years, yeah. we have the funding to. And that's and that's cool. built into the governance. Yes. The I think without having all the numbers in front of us, like Mike's looking for, I think you know, I think the maintenance cost, as compared to what we think we can get as rentals for the field, is going to be much different. So our our intent is to use that revolver to either replace the whole carpet or as a supplemental to replace, you know, yes. however much that much money will get us to replace the carpet, whatever the percentage is. I think the biggest cost is the eventual replacement of that. Because it has to be like a million. I just know the discussion for the, the Fruit Street field has been like a million dollars or 500 to a million to replace those fields. Yeah. That is a different kind of infill too, so I don't know if that includes both or just the carpet. I, I don't know. The I just heard no, numbers yeah. and yeah. how that's going to be funded down. You know, right. The same kind of planning that exactly. we're asking here is the same kind of planning that's already in place for the right. so Do you think you would be able to provide that financial model of tying all these? I think that's what we just that's talked about. That's why I asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk to Dan and Jay tomorrow. Okay. And and we'll definitely work on that. Um, yeah, I, he Dan has told us particularly that the baseball field and softball field um, can drive a very high rental price. I guess a lot of colleges don't have them, and you know, like Boston College, its home field is Northborough um, because, and they pay like four hundred dollars an hour. So, in particular, I think. We should, the 
expect to be able to generate some substantial revenue from that and um, then also use all summer by, um, you know, it's not going to make crazy or whatever. So can the models show us a percentage of the revolving account that is going to come from these kind of rentals versus the school years or the community league use? So that is that you so I mean you know, so is it gonna be sixty percent of what you think is gonna be your revenue or is it only twenty percent or I, I think I think we, uh, you know Parks and Rec would have to make some some assumptions mm -hmm. going forward, but I think yeah. we could pretty much use their model, yeah. you know, to yeah. to base ours. Mm -hmm. um, again, we I think we've agreed that our pricing our pricing structure is gonna be the same. Yeah. Um, kind of their projections are gonna be with you know, if this does move forward, they'll be able to host larger tournaments because they'll use the fruit tree and, uh, and uh, you know, the athletic fields behind the schools as big a tournament. So they're going to have to make some projections as well. So I think we're really going to have to lean on them a little bit as they, as they do this. If, if I may, I think in summary, there may be, based on what I'm hearing, two broad requests. If there's a financial performer, for the project, mm -hmm. if that could be shared. Mm -hmm. And the other underlying request, perhaps, is a realization that this project has gone through different reviews over time. Um, for example, CPC, the two components that they decided to identify. Could you please also provide a simple layout of the total cost of the project, identifying what each component will be paying for, i.e., CPC will pay for this. CPC seven hundred thousand will pay for this. The five hundred thousand will pay for this. The one point three will pay for this. Do you, is there anything like that that could be shared with the committee? Well, I mean, what I can share is is this: the seven hundred twenty thousand dollars is all of the lighting. So that's one thing that CPC is paying for. CPC is not allowed to pay for the carpet or the infill. So the rest of the million dollars, they basically said will go towards work that is not the carpet or the infield. They didn't go through, we do have a project list, they didn't go through and say this, this, not this, this. Um, so it can be applied to costs other than the carpet and the um, and the infill. <coughs> so I think just a breakout of that would be good. Yeah, that's fine. I, but I, I, I mean, I don't know. If if that's specific enough, that's fine, but I don't know that I could get a lot more granular than that. I'm, I'm assuming, perhaps ask differently, the bid package yeah. does break down the cost of the project. Is that available? You want the bid package? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah I'm saying yeah. That's something that was included in our um, record. We haven't, we haven't broken down the funds for that, though. We didn't say that our 500000 that we're raising yeah. through fundraising is going towards this. That's just essentially whatever's left over. The money that yeah. you know that we borrow and that we raise will go to the one point eight million. Yeah. The only I think, I think, I think put put just I don't want anybody to be confused. Put that aside. Okay. Just okay. that I asked that question. Okay. 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 <laughs> alternative alter, alternative yeah. alternatively there must be a project budget. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Part of that yeah, you have the cost estimate that doesn't break it out by Turf, drainage, fencing, you know, basketball, softball stuff. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Do you want more than once? If you, if it's available, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. But so so the big takeaway is the revenue projection, like that you're, and the cost projection, just sort of how it looks over time, building towards covering maintenance and offsetting replacement. Right. On my list. In addition to that, is the question regarding the electricity bills. The electricity bills. Yes, how yes. will be covered. Um, there's also the timeline for the $500,000 private fundraising. And also the apportionment of the revolving fund. I.e., what, what, what percentage of it will go towards capital maintenance, what percentage of you go towards operating, and so forth. Okay, yeah, I don't think that we identified those percentages in the MOU. I think that we assigned that job to the oversight committee, but I will send you the MOU, and then that might. Uh, and also, who's going to own that uh, revolving fund? 
responsibility for center school mm -hmm. and we have tried by all means to come up with a number that reflects that responsibility and I'll let Dave speak to that. And also uh, I think overall um, the budget proposed for FY19 for facilities and engineering also reflects the fact that there are two new buildings that we've now placed under Dave in addition to his responsibilities for town hall, the police station, senior center, the fire station, with a new DPW building and with a new expanded library. Plus, I suppose, so three, basically. Yeah, Plus, yeah, yeah. yeah well, you <coughs> summarize the very next. Just on top of that, what all that actually means, in, in fiscal year 16, 17, I had about 110,000 square feet of buildings. And FY19, I'll have almost 200. So um, we almost doubled in size of the building's space that we were taking care of. Um, on top of that, the library um, is, is going to be operating beyond normal hours for us. They're going to be open until 8. Uh, and I think their proposal is to stay open on Saturdays and part-time Sunday um, annually. So it's kind of new new area for facilities where we have to, you know, cover some of that with a staff person. So one of the budget requests uh, is a new full-time person working second shift. Uh, the, the contracted custodial firms can't really, can't really perform some of the tasks we need for monitoring and for overseeing, especially the library operations uh, at night. Uh, and on the weekend, I'm just looking for a part-time, like a 10-hour person. Um, to do the custodial um, services as well as they're going to have events on Saturdays and Sundays especially. Um, so I think we had a good mix of, you know, dropping um, 
contracts, custodial contracts for the library, um, which was an expensive, it was almost it was about a $35,000 building just to maintain the contract for custodial services. So it does cost a little more uh, under the current salary plan for a custodian um, salary range, but I, I believe the plan is to try to, you know, develop a new uh, position, like a nighttime custodian position. So not going to have the same. Currently, a custodian during the day, they, they do more than you know custodial cleaning services. They do a lot of oversight of contractors. They do some uh, maintenance <coughs> repairs. Uh, we don't think the nighttime custodian is going to be that level of service, so it may not be that level of expertise. So in reality, um, when we come to hiring, it may be a little lower than, than what's being presented in the budget. But all all we have right now to go with is one. One facilities custodian uh, in the salary administration plans. Um, snow removal again. <laughs> the two new buildings we have, we've doubled the space we, we do with snow removal. So um, the two, I currently have two full time uh, people and, and a 10 hour person who does the, the senior center only. Um, this year with the snow, um, I think having a nighttime custodian is going to be able to pick up. You know, snow removal activities after 3:30, um, as well as a different person on the weekend. It's just going to cut down on um, overtime hours for, for the custodians to perform those duties as well. So we should realize some savings um, in the overtime budget if we kept the same model of just using eight to four folks to cover the nine and cover the weekends. And for covering center school, I'm, I'm not sure. I worked with Tim. Um, Tim presented a, a summary of costs for center school operating costs, you know, elevator maintenance, all your, all your normal electricity, natural gas, um, all those annual kind of inspections that we're still going to have to do. Um, we're going to create a separate line item just tracking center school expenses. So it was the easiest way to break it out of what the actual facilities budget is without center school and kind of how it really is impacting the budget because you know my budget goes up by 24 percent or something but you know 18 19 percent of it is, is center school alone um, and in addition to that I think we're I'm, I'm going to you know manage some of the, the park and rents requests for more emergency maintenance they're asking for additional funds through their budget um, so overall, I think it's close to $160,000 just for center school. Kind of added on to the back end of my budget this year. Are there any uses for the center school? To, you know, or is it just going to be for annual inspections? Or if I may, the, the, the I'll, 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 I'll answer the reverse order. Yes, the idea is to keep the place functional. And protect the assets. Uh, however, what I what I what I just learned also today is that there'll be more there may be more money required to keep the boiler working in the gym. Here's why I mentioned the gym. One of the requests that has come through um, is Park and Rec continuing to use the facility as they have in past years. Uh, they need it for their they use it for their summer program. They use it for their fall program. They use it throughout the year, so we now need to keep the place open throughout the year. Like they have a marathon school that they can switch over? Parks and Rec? I, I, I don't believe that it's been part of the plan. I think what they had said they were going to start working on it, but they couldn't do it over the summer for sure because marathon school will be full time getting the punch list done and moving the teachers in for the, for the fall. But I believe they're talking about doing something on further down the road, but I don't know when that will kick in. What's the long-term plan? Is this just for this year or is this going to be until we decide? Just, just so far, it's just for this year, but you know, the, the, um, the committee, the um, is a center school reuse advisory group that is meeting oh, okay. and co collecting recommendations that will be presented to the selectmen. Some short-term uses will be parking racks. There's a meeting room over there that 
you know, occasionally maybe staff could have meetings over there um, just to keep the building occupied somewhat. And it's a little unique. You can't turn off certain areas of the heat in the building. <laughs> so with park and recs being there, you've got to really maintain um, the heat throughout. Um, well, there is a kitchen, you know, the, the cafeteria that's down there. I'm not sure what's going to be left for kitchen equipment, but uh, when the school is uh, school is done with it. But if you had refrigerators and, and stuff down there, you could have certain activities. And, and some of the um, Areas that are at grade, kind of the middle section, might be, uh, you know, probably functional for, for um, file storage um, on at least a short-term basis as we transition back into town hall, um, and we're still I'm still working with with the departments and with the town manager on kind of a longer-term uh, plan for, for file storage. But at least it gets us out of the lease uh, that we're currently working with now that the insurance company is paying for. But when we move back, that, that's not a cost that the insurance company is going to cover. Do you need a custodian there to maintain this building as well? Center school? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I think it is going to be an absolute minimal um, and, and I'm um, relying on Park and Rex a little bit to, to, to help maintain the areas and, and when there's use, they'll put but we'll, we'll probably have our own staff maybe do that or um, look at hiring a, a custodial company two days a week or something just to keep the costs at a real minimum. So it just seems like, you know, long, I understand you're working on long term plans, but short term, it just seems like the costs are exorbitant for parks to direct to use the gym or whatever mm -hmm. the plan is. Other, like, is there like a, I don't say a risk study or a cost study for different options or something? What to do? Well, I, I know the, the Center School Reuse Committee is, is working on a long term. It's had some, some um, short term immediate recommendations that they presented to the select a couple months ago. Was it maybe two, three months ago? Um, I'm not exactly sure what that Yeah, that's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and is there any, maybe it's part of the committee's um, kind of advisory recommendation that we are waiting for, but is there any opportunity for monetization in the next year or so? Any uh, service or in any way? My understanding is that the feedback from the community so far is in favor of retaining municipal use. And then as far as a new DPW facility, are there, again, it's, it's a bigger building, right? So I know from Marathon School we had an increase in some of their budget because of the increased cost of just heating that. Is that also built into your budget or is that turned up elsewhere? But that's um, in, in my budget. Okay. Um, the, the electricity use for the DPW in fiscal year 18, we anticipated six months of use. So we're going to move in in October, November. So I'm maintaining only 50% as we, we actually signed a, 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 an agreement with um, a solar company. We have solar panels on the roof. Mm -hmm. um, and they're almost, I say they don't need it. <laughs> you know, there will be minimal cost, zero cost to the town for the electricity that that generates. Mm -hmm. um, the energy model that we're looking at, 50% of what we anticipated um, should cover the electricity costs, but with electricity, you, you never really know. Mm -hmm. um, I do plan on monitoring it, and if need be, it'll be one of the larger energy users. So I will, I can s switch it over to the. Um, we also have another, is a Holliston solar project, a much larger project that we have smaller uh, accounts covered with. We could probably, you know, switch over. The uh, smaller accounts into the DPW and uh, plan and enter the library as well. Um, and the only other additional cost for the DT DPW this year is, a, is a, uh, an increase of about you know nine thousand, ten thousand dollars for you know 
just regular uh, repair needs. Um, as the warranty items, you know, starts running out, uh, we're going to have to just have regular, um, normal repair maintenance and service calls for, for, for just everything. And, you know, the Starship buildings they build now, it's, everything's, everything's automated and everything's computerized. There are a lot more moving parts in the DPW and library than there are in the town hall, so. <laughs> But other than that, you know, just new costs are really what's in here. We really tried to minimize. Um, the original budget was going to be looking for two full time, um, but I think this year we can, you know, with, with the requests, try to keep the budgets at a minimum. Um, we're hoping we can, you know, make way with the one full time and the 10 hour person, and that'll get us through um, at least this year and see how it works out. So overall, currently you have two full time, one part time, and you're moving towards four full time. I will have three full time and two ten hour folks. So that adds up to one part time. So it'll be three and a half. If I may, I, Dave, I know you may not be ready for this, but I, I think it's it's also helpful for you to uh, share with the appropriations committee the value add from your department in terms of how much in grants you, build, you bring to the town mm -hmm. and also the other long-term efficiencies that you've built into the other departments in town. Thanks. Um, <laughs> we, we did the conversion, our facilities was responsible for the conversion of the LED streetlights. Um, we, are, we do realize some of those savings in the streetlight account, I think it's a 30% savings this year on that line item. We received a grant through MAPC for that. Uh, well, our connection is through MAPC, and, uh, which is a metropolitan area planning council and the Department of Energy Resources. Uh, so that was, I think it was a $35,000 grant we received for that. Um, through Maya, we've received some equipment, free equipment, infrared cameras that I think we're going to use, and it was a small $1,500. Uh, we received a green community grant last year for uh, mostly projects at, at the schools at Hopkins to up, upgrade the Hopkins um, uh, building management system uh, as well as some constant speed pumps to variable speed pumps and that was about $250,000 grant um, for that. Um, on top of that we're still you know we're still looking at the power purchase agreements which today have probably saved, you know, for the accounts. Um, that was police station, senior center, the treatment plant, um, two big water wells. We're saving about 25 um, to 30% on the electricity um, for, for those buildings. So, you know, since with all the power purchase agreements and, and, and other agreements, we really tried to really stay level funded with the electricity uh, natural gas over the last 10 years. With the new two new buildings coming online, and it's probably the first year we're really asking for additional funds because you know, the electricity bills are they're close to five five thousand dollars a month for these buildings. Um, now that we have the police station, senior center, uh, library, and PW valves, they're all new buildings. They're very energy efficient, but they do use a lot more electricity. are still looking into uh, another grant to uh, supply free LED lights and LED fixtures. Uh, they're just trying to find a way to get them installed by July. And that, that's about, you know, $1,500 per month. Um, so that's that's what you know, it's yeah. Well, yeah, for, for the purchase of the new fixture itself, the new LED lights themselves, and the uh, install. Probably get about 60% of savings, um, and it's a free program right now. So, on top of everything else, we're trying to, and it would be every every light fixture. In, 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 so, it's just a it's one of those municipal financing. You have to install them by July, um, yeah. so we're trying to <laughs> get just create money. Um, but we're really trying to to watch spending on everything else. So, towards the end of the year. 
hopefully have enough funds to, to do do a few of those projects in the general building soon now and then come the funds. So we'll go for all of the people on the 50% savings from how much we spend. Yeah. Okay. And if I may, I know Rebecca, you had a question on town hall projects. Yeah, I didn't know, yeah, like the town hall, the work that's being done now. Um, there's some other projects listed. I wasn't sure how many of those, well, obviously they're not getting funded by the insurance, but is the stuff that's going on right now with town hall all getting funded by the insurance, or is there other stuff that the town's going to have to put forward? For a capital article, there's only capital article for town hall that is an IT, I think an IT one, which is um, okay. security. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's cameras, but those yeah. are active. Yeah, I, I think, yes, I think cameras have been They've been removed. Mm -hmm. There's access control um, that I know is part of one of IT's capital articles. Um, there are no other really capital articles for, for the town hall, but you know the work, all of the restoration work for what was damaged yeah. uh, is, is being covered by the insurance. Um, and there is some other... You know, there's a there's a transition between what was damaged and what wasn't, mm -hmm. um, where it, it it made sense to really focus and look at trying to do some you know uh, renovations of uh, changing the layout of the first floor mm -hmm. from an efficiency standpoint, from a safety standpoint, to to get the public out of the middle of finance and accounting, mm -hmm. um, and, and some of that work. Uh, is not insurance related and there were some emergency repairs that we had to do when all the work was done. Um, we did a structural inspection um, and it turned out we had to do some structural repairs to the building before we put, put all the walls and floors back up. That was pre-existing condition, yeah, it wasn't paid for. Uh, and, and then the big one was the, um, the, the fire suppression system in the building was out of code. So that was another, we had to, uh, it was a health, public health and safety. We uh, requested a waiver from DCAM um, to, to uh, not follow procurement advertisement, so just so that we could just get it done as quickly as possible. And, and we had, had seen some of those, um, we foreseen, foresaw some of those last year, but having to do in this fiscal year, so. So where is that money coming from, though, if it's not with the insurance? I know last fiscal year we knew some of it was coming, so we, we, we requested some DEA transfers and some encumbrances. Yeah. Um, that's where it's all coming from. Oh, God, who would it, yeah. <laughs> it covers it all. But it's going to, you know, we posted some pictures of the, on the website. And put, yeah. You yeah. know, look at it. I saw the post today. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going yeah. to look, look different, much different. Because the, the insurance company has been, been fantastic. They okay. allowed us to update, you know, up, it, it was actually cheaper for them to put in newer stuff, newer paint, newer fixtures, to try to put in some of the old ones that yeah. match them, so, yeah. Okay. And then I know there was a basement renovation um, article, too, or a mention of that. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that was going forward or not. I just saw a reference to it somewhere. Um, in fact, I think the reference has been that some of the, investment in previous years mm -hmm. in the basement um, mitigated the impact of the flood okay. uh, okay. the town. Okay. Yeah. But other than other than the, the downtown project I you know turn the town which is obviously the slide by capital projects this year. I have one big generator. Isn't that one of the articles that was on last year? It, 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 <laughs> it, it's I, I have bids, I just I have to purchase it. Uh, I have the specs and the design, I just get them on. And lost all sound. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey Pam, can you hear us? Hey Pam. She said she, she lost all sound. She lost all sound. Uh-oh. But those the, those projects, uh, the generator project is is from a Hello. end of year. Hey Pam. Stuff. Thank you. Okay. Well, I thought it was. I know we discussed it last year. Um, and yeah. Then, and then, the, then everything happened right before time. Right. Originally, the generator was going to be a capital article, yes. and it ended up being covered with a year end transfer. Okay. Um, so you're hoping to get it in by the end of the year. I can get it before we move back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not looking for it, it's not there yet. Yeah. Okay.
Okay. So color change. <coughs> yeah. Is that it about the budget? No, main suit. Main suit. Big project. Main suit. Yeah. Almost forgot. Yeah. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> you want to talk about the capital articles? The capital projects? Yep. The, um, we have, um, I think right now, four articles. One is for borrowing um, for undergrounding in, in other ineligible items. And then there are three are for easements. The, the, at this town meeting, it's really asking permission for the selectmen to pursue and negotiate uh, easements for the project. Uh, it's a federal funded project. Uh, that's where all the money that comes from the TIP program ultimately comes from. The state does kick in some. So it's following this federal easement process, which is you know a nine to 12 month process. Um, the negotiation part of this really can't start until the 75% design has been submitted and approved by MassBot. 75% design is scheduled to be submitted in July, but um, with the annual town meeting in May, obviously we're just looking for permission for, there's temporary easements, and what a temporary easement it is, the project is going to the right-of-way limits so any work you do on a right-of-way line, you're going to have to cross that line and go into somebody's private property. You might have some machines in there. You'll have workers there. You'll have some impacts. Um, so you, you have to tell the folks that work's going to happen. And for the federal process, there's a, you know, we have to get every every parcel, temporary easement, permanent easement, utility easement uh, appraised, um, and then you actually have to hire. A, an appraiser to review the appraisals. <laughs> so there's a review appraiser and then there's an appraiser appraiser. Um, but this is the first step at this town meeting is to just ask permission for the selectmen to, you know, start that process um, and actually reach out, contact the property owners, uh, and then there's a whole list of, you know, what they, how they negotiate, you know, it could be gifts or it could be donations or it could be takings or it just agreements. And you break it out into three separate ones, temporary easement. Permanent easement is where you're actually requesting or taking property that's already private property that might be in the right of way. Like there's some areas where there's sidewalks or actually small pieces of them are private property. So you ask for a permanent easement on there. Most people are happy to get rid of sidewalks as a certain liability for, for homeowners in reality, thinking risk-wise. Um, and some of them are for, you know, equipment, where you have traffic cabinets, you have um, mask arms for the big traffic lights, uh, and there'll be a couple, you know, one was like the, uh, the, the agreement, is it finalized yet for um, CVS? The long ag agreement, discussion, negotiation with, with CVS on, on that piece of property so you can realign the intersection. And we're looking at, on the other side of the road, um, adding a lane on Cedar Street going south um, to take a right turn. And that's going to require an easement on the Sunoco's property. So there's temporary easements. Those are permanent easements. And then you have utility easements, which will be required for the undergrounding. Um, so you have to underground the utilities to people's homes. That they'll know in businesses. There'll be no more overhead wires going to their feeding their, their um, residences and the buildings. So you have to go underground, and, and that's going to require an underground uh, utility easement. Uh, currently, they have easements. Um, utilities have easements for your overhead wires, which, but you just have to go through the process again to get. Norman, we do not vote on the articles related to easements. Is that correct? Um, I'll have to check my notes. I would be yes. yeah. that. Yeah. Yes, I, I think the the cap, capital improvement committee has to. Um, okay. Because there's no specific appropriation in this case. There's yeah, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> there's no specific appropriation, so the vote of the appropriations committee may not be required. But we'll, we'll check with just to make sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't recall us ever voting in the past on easements, so. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, there may be the next town meeting if there's a cost associated with that we haven't yeah. funded through something else. Um, there may be costs associated with some of these easements. So this whole project is, how much is the town having to pay for it? Or is it all funded by the federal and state money? And yeah. Where are we with that? Is it? <laughs> I don't think we've got there yet. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry, I'm jumping the gun. Yeah. No, that's yeah. Overall, the main street corridor project is funded through the Transportation Improvement Program, both federal and state funds. Mm -hmm. um, the total cost for the project right now, Dave, is 8 point. Well, with or without undergrounding. With, without undergrounding. Without undergrounding, it's about 8.5 eight and a half million dollars. And then also, as part of this process, there are non-participatory components of the project. Yep. Undergrounding, uh, ornamental furniture. So far, so far. S some ornamental, yes. I mean, we're negotiating with mass, but it could be ornamental yeah. street lights for Wood Street, um, but since we already have them at Main Street, they may be um, required to cover those costs. Yes. But there's there's small there's small non roadway traffic improvement pedestrian improvement bike lane improvement items um, undergrounding would be lighting you'd have a separate lighting system because if it's undergrounding you won't have the, the street lights for off the poles you would have to put in our own kind of pedestal <coughs> lights up and down each side of the, the road it would look they, they look very nice but yeah. they just uh, like the common has those types of lights in it already. Okay, about, I was going to say, where can I see those lights? They're about eight, eight feet tall, right? Eight, about eight feet tall. Yeah, about eight, eight, ten. And yeah. there, there's a whole complicated control system. You can, you can, you can get a little, you can get a little creative with those lighting systems. You can turn different lights and stuff if you really wanted to. But um, that might be a non-participatory cost. But it, we, the, the cost for the undergrounding. It, and all those non-participatory items right now is about five and a half million. Um, but the article would only be asking, be asking to borrow five and a half, but the request would be for three, I believe, is what the town had already, you know, negotiated over the years with, with uh, host community agreements to, to put about two and a half million dollars towards the underground. So it's another situation where you have to ask for the full amount, but you're not expecting to have to actually borrow that full amount. Yeah. 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 So for which section? Oh, it's okay. It's a, so for about a 13, 14 million dollar job, you know, with as an undergrounding project, the town would be looking at about two million dollars for the project. So. so that raises the question that I had put forward, which is. Um, on the two and a half million that is coming from legacy and views, if the undergrounding is not passed for whatever reason, could that money be used elsewhere or is it only to be used for undergrounding? Is that part of the HGAs? Yeah, at, at, at this point, uh, if I remember the, the specifics, um, the money overall is identified through specific contracts. So there's a contractual obligation in terms of how the money can be used. Um, in terms of legacy, uh, it clearly is limited to undergrounding and trails. And then in terms of the news, I believe, in, 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 and I'll check the, the, the actual contract, it's in relation to the traffic improvements or impacts, including underground on Main Street. So, like so, sidewalks, like this price yeah. chopper would not be part of their improvement use. That was not identified as an impact of the project. And again, the, the context of host community agreements is you have a project that has identifiable impacts and then you ask the developer to mitigate those impacts. So that's the answer to your, to your question. These funds are identified through an existing contract based on identifiable impacts of specific projects that came through the town. 
and do we know how much is for each of them? For Legacy and Muse each? I, I Muse was one million. Yeah, I, I can forward that information to the, to the committee uh, tomorrow. Yeah. So to summarize, the cost would be eight million. <coughs> Town will be uh, covering three million. Rest are covered by federal and state. Yeah. No. Yeah. The the eight point five million is covered by federal and state. Oh. Okay. Yes. And then. It, in okay. And then in addition to that, there are non-participatory items, yeah. um, things that the community believes are important for this project to function uh, in the context of the community, including undergrounding, including appropriate street furniture, including some landscape. There is landscaping that could be covered, there is landscaping that could not be covered. There are also, there may be improvements that are required on some properties that are directly impacted by this project. That will be the 5.5 5. 5. of which 2.5 is covered in house committee agreements and the 3 million is what we'll be asking to appropriate the town meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We are still negotiating with NASA on some of Exactly. We'll, we'll keep negotiating until the very end. Exactly. Yeah. So far, I think the accomplishments have been one. This is unusual. Our landscaping, our still furniture, is still considered part of the project cost that will be funded by the feds. Yeah. Number two, we are also pushing for the cost of undergrounding to be offset by the cost of moving the overhead uh, lines that will be avoided if we go underground. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. and then additionally, we're also pushing for, from a public safety viewpoint, the lines at the intersection just have to be put underground. What is that cost, and can that cost be borne by the feds? dollar article does not pass or it's voted down most of the projects still so there's no landscape that is for cost of like the landscaping too it, it depends if base landscaping the feds will, will find but if you want landscaping that will mimic what we already had at the common they may ask us to to pay using uh, local funds um, however if, if underground, you get just the direct answer to your question, if, if, if the town does not approve this funding, the project then proceeds without underground. Because the, that town meeting was already voted down once to do underground, and so it's kind of rearing its ugly head again. That's why I'm asking these questions. Just wondering, Mike, uh, what you mentioned at that time, did we have these other numbers in the front or it was just the other down? So the same might be the more solid yeah. 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 yeah, but in addition to that, back then, the, pro the project just on a run was almost 8 million. And it covered a longer span. And then also, um, um, back, 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 back then, we, we didn't have the finance design numbers from the utilities. Now now we have the design from Verizon, okay. but yes, Eversource, and we're working on Comcast to provide their design. If we don't do the underground, we can't use the money from the host community agreements for anything else that is specifically targeted for underground. Undergrounding. Undergrounding for trails, and for traffic impacts yeah. for, for the mills. And since these are contracts, if the town is to use these funds for other uses, 
that might yeah. be very difficult. Yeah, definitely. Yes. On it. Yeah, we we are waiting for feedback from uh, Unibank with those numbers. Okay. Yeah, we'll share that with the appropriations committee uh, as soon as we can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and finally, is there any possibility of this going to be excluded or within the limit limit, or is that both tomorrow night by the selection? Uh, sorry, I, I missed your question. Is it better exclusion? Yeah. Is, is the $3 million part of the exclusion valid? Or? That, that's, that hasn't been discussed. So. so is that also good for discussion tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. Okay. Cool. Discussion tomorrow That was the answer question. Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> Any other questions? No. no. All right, thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. Thank you. And again, thank you, thanks for uh, letting me move for tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. All right. I have my seat back there. Next on the agenda. Oh, yeah, Uh, we have budget related discussion. Yeah, I, I, I think this would be the, yes, this would be the opportunity for the board to frame any questions that you would like us to answer ahead of the um, meeting on Wednesday as well as the public hearing. Because of the time, is it are we better up tabling that until Wednesday? The public hearing is on Thursday, right? Yes. Or we could continue uh, to send in questions. Norman and have him compile everything so that we can do that on Wednesday. Yes, uh, and, and, and the other piece too, Pam, if I may, through the chairs. I'm already also thinking about the appropriations committee report. We have compiled some basic, basic data, um, um, more or less along the lines that you followed last year. However, expanded the the, the data to incorporate some of the themes that have come up right. uh, in, in the last two or three months. Um, and thus, to that end, if there are any specific themes that you would like us to address, let's start that conversation now uh, in the next 10, 15 minutes or we'll wait for questions from, from the committee. What kind of thing are you adding based on the, the past? I guess I have to review. I have to review what we did last year because yeah. I know we put a lot of good information in there, yeah. um, but I think a lot of it surrounds the debt. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, one thing that's coming to light, or I think I might have mentioned last year, that everyone's asking when's the high school coming on. We'll have a lot of money after that, but it also coincides with the MSBA reimbursement. That's actually like a hundred thousand dollar difference. So there's by 2021, when it ends, there's not going to be a big uh, drop in the debt. And how do we show that? Because if you show debt only, you show it as you see a steep drop off, but then you also have to look at MSBA reimbursements as part of that's part of that debt to show that also tails off too. So that's like the one slide would be kind of good to show the impact of both because I think the debt and the MSBA is all tied together in terms of do the two and then show the combination of the two and the impact. There's some, something like that along those lines that, that's important for people to understand um, that, that everything we add, because everything we vote on and gets added to debt, whether it's an inclusion even within the budget, that you know, in the last couple of years we benefited from all these projects back in 2000, 2001, starting to tail off. Um, that's not occurring this time, and, uh, or as steep as it was before. Exactly. So yeah. we, we have to be mindful of our budgets and capital projects. I, I think as we saw this year, um, clearly, 
that did crowd out the operating budget. Yeah. I mean, these are big jumps this year, but you know, in past years we've been benefit of the very high new growth and we're still projected for the next budget, but how much longer is it going to be projected? We have to be mindful of how debt future debt because it's all the current debt will be paid, is now based in and how that uh, what we decide on down the road is more mindful. Why did the debt service costs go up this time? Remember how when we first looked at the budget we thought it was going to go down this year and it's gone up? <coughs> oh this well this is we have a big free project so this is the second yeah. year of the big free so project. That's why it went yeah, up. It's kicking in. So we knew, we knew last year was going to be big and this year was going to be Pretty big. And in fact, in answer to your question, remember when we first rolled out the budget information, mm -hmm. we did not include the November 2017 board. Okay. We did not have that. Yeah. And I know you, your project, you already have future projections. I might say right in front of you, but to show that of the three projects, that will, it will, is there going to be an increase in the 2020 budget? I probably look, you have your future yeah. estimates between yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a little bit. <coughs> it goes up more in 2021. Um, the increases? Yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's service. Plus, well, yeah. so you can hear on the slide. So it's down to 9, nine million. 9.1. and then it goes back up 9.2, and then it goes down to 8.1. Right, that, that's my comment, that, that's when the high school comes off, right. but then the MSBA reimbursement so the drops. Yeah, yeah. goes up, yeah, goes back up. I'm sorry, so 2021 is the last year that we pay right. for the high school debt. MSBA. And you see it drop off in 2022, but you also look at the MSBA reimbursement. That's going to drop off by that, am that amount. So it's really not, we're not, it's still going to be around 9.2 because we just don't no longer get those reimbursements. But it doesn't right. show up on that line. It's actually worse because it drops off. Uh, Zero. The debt goes down a million, but the MSBA reimbursement goes down one and a half million. Yeah. Right, so. Yeah. Yeah, so there's kind of an inflection point. Right. MSB reinvestment zero. Yeah. So that, what well, kind of look good. Oh, yeah, I see the big tail. Right. It, it doesn't really hurt. Yeah. And that's important to have in a chart. So, like, even in, my, in a presentation, I think that's important for people to understand future budgets, what we're doing together, our slides. We always do try to show that. It's been kind of difficult in the last couple of years to put that in. How much did the high school cost? 16 million. Yeah. 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 The high school cost 16 million. It was, it was one, six. Six. one six. It was 30, 32 million. <laughs> and then okay. got, at that time, we got 15% reimbursement yeah. from the state. Okay. Well, yeah. times have changed, so now we get 30, 30 something percent. Yeah, but I mean, like possibly. Oh, so yeah, yeah, so you're not going to see the yeah. wrap up. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think <laughs> in, in terms of debt service, um, there are other things that we're doing at ground level that you need to be aware of. We're making sure that the town meeting approved budgets are accurately reflected in our Munis accounting system and that those numbers also line up with the numbers that we submitted to the state for certification processes. We've done that with A.18. We're going to go back to A.17, it's just that we're now focusing on town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and our push is to really, really make sure that the, the data is accurate. We're also in the process we are also identifying other opportunities for the town. 
for example, there are appropriations that we made over the years where the town spent less than the borough that was authorized. So we're now talking to town council about the vehicles that will then have these borrowings that we approved and no longer needed to be extinguished from our council. Did we do something last year where we took a bunch of those and we actually had town meeting reappropriate them to other uses? That was actually the second grouping. Okay. What I'm looking for specifically is the borrowings that, that mm -hmm. we actually uh, effected. Yeah. I mean, if to extend the yeah. And then there's also the capital articles that we were appropriated and we didn't spend the money. Mm -hmm. That's what we did last year yeah. with some of them. And we'll continue to do that. Okay. There's now a third group here. We've now identified that there may actually be CPC articles that fall. That, that are in a similar situation. Appropriated, not expanded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these are large amounts, these are no small amounts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I guess that's kind of a good problem to have, right? Yeah, it's a good problem. Yeah. It's a good problem. <laughs> I actually would like to see how much the CPC, in terms of how much they actually have been. It's not a revolving fund, is it? Reserve. Or it's a reserve. How much they have? Because a lot of the bigger purchases are are, are debt. You know, they're borrowing. Right. Right. And I, I think it's actually been not too bad. But you can over, even though you, you know how much it is coming in, because we're taking out. But you can let their leverage. You know, it's a point where they're leveraging that by using everything as a borrowing instead of a uh, just paying for it outright. So. There's a point where the town cannot say, well, let's get rid of CPCs too expensive. We're not getting any reimbursement from the state. Let's get rid of it. And you're like, well, we really can't because we have 20, 30 years out in terms of all these borrowings. Yes. Um, I think I've seen it at some point, but it's a, I think it's a good number for the town to understand because mm -hmm. people care about how much debt the town has, but, but the CPC debt kind of go, when you look at that, the CPC debt go into that you know, when you say what's the what's the current as a percentage of the overall budget, how much is on debt or how much is our debt? Okay. It's kind of an interesting. Uh, Can they also show the total debt we have outstanding? That's why. Show it. how much we've taken on, like just in terms of total. Yeah, it's, in fact, I have the number, it's 90 plus 21. 90? 111 million? Yeah. As of this year. Yes, as of this year. I think that's a more shocking number than, here's our debt service year over year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And well, everything else we were pretty much almost paying off, yeah. and, and it's the new stuff. That's why you looked at our last year's debt before these projects were done, like, a year in terms of the service now we're jumping back up to nine. So. Yeah. And in fact, granted the number is huge, I, I share the pain that is expressed by, by the taxpayers. In the books though, our, our, our ratio of debt to the town funding capacity is very relatively low. That's why the town continues to retain its triple. Part of the reason why the town continues to Pretend it's triple A rating. Do we know what that ratio is? Yes, I can tell you in two minutes. When is that all paid? That when is when is the hundred and eleven million? When is that all paid off? And Shahadul said twenty five years, and, and Norman said it's a very amount. And I think that's a good question because typically we never really borrow more than twenty years, but we kind of change that, and, um, which goes with the question for the bar, you know, the debt service or what we're doing in this 
next budget, how much of the requirements are going to be 20 year versus 30 year? I think we just had the one that was a 30 year last year. Or am I ending fiscal 17? You're ending fiscal 17. That's another indicator of how quickly our debt service uh, chart shows it going down over time. It's 30 years so much. The payments are lower at the beginning, but this, uh, the service is much, the, the repayment is much lower. And you would not see that drop off like we saw between 2010 and 2017. Question, Pam. We'll be we'll be able to circulate something to the committee by Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I do have questions on the overall budget, but I think I have to hold off until Wednesday because it's basically going to be what are the outliers? All right, why is Parks and Rec? Are we going to see Parks and Rec going to have representation? Where? Why is their budget up? Why are some the, 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 whose budgets are up? And why? That's pretty much maybe the question. Yeah. 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 Um, in, in, in fact, based on yeah. Pam, yes. based on your questions, we we, we noticed we. We had not sent the narratives to, to the committee. Yeah. We do have the narratives oh, that good. explain what went up and why. Okay. And we'll send those off. Yes, we'll good. send those off uh, by tomorrow. Okay, good. good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we noticed some needed to be revised following some of the budget adjustments that were made. Okay. Yes? Sorry about that, Pam. I know you <laughs> mentioned it. Travel safety, please. Yes. Travel safety. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.